Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today and as you may guess from the title I'm going to be asking you the question of is this guy a dirty driver? I'm I'm not really 100% sure so I want to get your opinion on this. I think it's a mixture of circumstances but we've got two great races to show you. The first race is the one where I want your opinion so do let me know in the comment section what you think about the driving that you're going to see in this race. This is a very... Um, crazy race we're starting from the back of the grid we haven't set a qualifying on the american server and we're driving obviously from um the uk we've got quite good internet so we pick up pretty similar we get three bars but you will see um since the last update the american servers seem a little bit sketchy compared to what they were about three weeks ago so i don't know if anyone else has noticed this when you're actually in the american region um, maybe for FIA or something, but the servers don't seem very stable. I don't know if that's a Sony issue or a Gran Turismo issue, but as you can see, going into turn one, one car deciding to back out, and I think he wants to start the race from the back as well, and going through the first sector. Another car there, I don't know if he's took someone out, so we're already up to P14 in this race, and working our way into this really twisty section, but just look at the amount of cars in front of us. We're gonna go to the TV re replay camera here as we take a look at the action right behind that McLaren there a lot of lag going on the McLaren was lagging quite a lot in this race so you can see him there his cars going left and right left and right not everyone's car was doing it, it just seemed to be the odd one or two cars as we're going through here all compact together um, going around the outside of the Honda NSX egg trying to do a nice move on him he gives us a nice bit of space through there and we managed to go around the outside and look like we're going to get this position from the NSX as we break a little bit later he tries to go back around the outside he's not able to do that and we get that position quite nicely actually quite respectful through here no real um, chaos it's quite sorted out there a lot better than I expected but you can see up ahead of us we've got another group of cars battling away there about four or five cars we're going to fast forward the action until we come up behind the Subaru here as you can see breaking through there Subaru obviously very good on traction not so good through the faster corners compared to the Megane and also not that amazing on the straight line speed but we managed to get through the inside here taking that inside line and now we're up to P11 before we get onto this main straight we've got that McLaren in front of us now the McLaren that was suffering a bit with the um, connection issues you can see it on his car every now and then a little bit of um, stuttering lag going on and we've got a car up just up ahead of that with a half a second penalty that's probably from a corner cut on one of the corners possibly the last corner going too far over the curb you can see it looks like they're going to go three wide into turn one that's actually going to cause a bit of chaos you can see the citroen getting out of the way there getting a little bit twitchy on the exit and now we're right behind the action remember we're starting on the medium tires here so i was planning to do three three laps or something like that on the mediums and then pit for seven laps on the softs as we see an opportunity to go up the inside there keeping it nice and clean we're going to then go try and go around the outside of this chaos that is approaching us um, we managed to hold the outside around the subaru and then break nice and early because we do not want to hit that citroen the citroen actually hits the car on his left and we managed to get ourselves up to p8 but we've got this brazilian on our left he's got a half second penalty we're going to try and hang it around the outside i didn't think he was going to battle this too hard because he's got the half second penalty but it does give us a little nudge there and then squeezes us off the track not really too bad it wasn't really dirty that i think that was just more he was running wide there that corner he was always on the steer and it's a very hard corner however we get a little bit of a lag pun there. I don't know if you can see that in the mirror. Looks like the McLaren just got a little bit of lag. And I don't think it was deliberate. I just think it's a racing incident. You can see his car is all over the place with lag. And unfortunately for us, we're doing a full 360 degrees there. And spinning round and getting back in the race in P18. So all that hard work done on the opening lap, unfortunately means we're going to pit now. You can see we skip ahead to the end of lap two. And I decided to get in the pits nice and early and go for the eight laps on the soft tire to try and get a bit of an undercut over some of these other drivers you can see a few other drivers have also gone with the same strategy here now obviously the advantage of this is that you're you're gonna have a massive undercut because you can see on the track map we've got a nice big open gap there as we skip ahead to the end of lap four where we managed to put a few decent laps in you can see on the delta there 51.1 it's not amazing but we're trying to look after the tires and you see the advantage that has done for us already as we come through to um, the turn one where we go for that move up the inside of the Citroen manage to make it work we get ourselves up one more position and up into P11 so yeah you can really see the advantage of doing that on the cut there with the 17 you know the 17 to 20 second pit lane loss I think it's actually about 20 seconds around this track um, gives you a nice bit of clean air 
and we've managed to get ourselves back into a competitive situation in this race. You know, we're in P11, there's cars ahead of us that still haven't pitted. However, you can see I've got that brake bias five to the rear because I'm trying to save the Megane's front tires. We've got to do eight laps on these soft tires. So I'm trying to really look after these soft tires as we fast forward the action until we come up behind another Megan in front of us. This driver in front, similar strategy to me, he pitted the same lap as me. And um, we were a little bit faster and we we're also trying to save tires. So I was just I wasn't really trying to overdrive the cars, just waiting until we get in the slipstream. You can see into the slipstream now of the Megan in front of us as we go down the main street. Are we gonna go for a move here? We're gonna to go to the right hand side and try and get this move done. He actually just lets us go down there, but I braked a little bit later. I kind of wasn't expecting him to be so open to let me go down the inside, but he tries the undercut. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Let us go down the inside. He'll try the undercut. And now you're gonna see some absolutely brilliant driving. Uh, this is why we all race on sim racing. I love moments like this. Side by side through here, respect given, space given, great spatial awareness from both of us. You can see, allowing each other to give you know, go through the car, hit the corners with enough space to make them. No issue here. Again, side by side, all the way through here. I take the really wide line to give myself a bit better exit speed. And you can see, still side by side, as we go into this tricky left-hand corner, luckily for myself, I have the inside line and we managed to make that move. But I do enjoy moments like that when I'm racing on any racing game, um, when you've got drivers that give you the respect on the corners and give you enough space and you give it back to them and it all works out nicely and we take that P6 position in this race. If we see a car ahead getting all sideways out of that corner, obviously getting on the power maybe a little bit too early in second gear, giving the um, rear tires a little bit too much work to do there. Um, we're gonna fast forward the action again as we skip through this little section here before we get right behind P5 and think about going for a move on him as we see. He gets a little bit loose there, goes onto the dirt and gravel and we're gonna go around the outside of him if we can do that move, but no, we have to back out of that, try and cut back on the inside. To me and I'm also on the soft tires. Obviously they've probably got a two lap older tire. So we do the fake, unfortunately we go onto the grass a little bit there, don't really judge that very well. And then we're gonna try another fake, go back on the inside, brake a little bit later, manage to get the brakes pretty much spot and we give him loads of space, keeping the car nice and tight to the apex. However, he did go for that wider line, got a much better exit than myself. And we were relying on the other Megan to give us a little bump draft there, which he does. We get the bump draft and we're into this corner in the lead. I made sure I gave a little bit of space on the apex there just in case he threw it up the inside. So we didn't quite hit that apex perfectly, but we're still up into P4 now and now heading for that podium position in this race. This is going to be quite interesting where we actually come in this race because we obviously got spun out on the opening lap, on lap two I think it was, sorry and we lost quite a lot of positions and time in the race. So the fact that we're up to P4 already in this race, now we are gonna have quite bad tires by the end of the race. However, it'll be interesting if we can maybe put ourselves in contention for the victory in this. So let's just see how it works out. We've obviously got the cars in front of us. I think that the uh, one of these drivers has already pitted that's in front of us at this stage of the race. So he's obviously come out on fresher tires. As we go through the corner, we see P3 has a massive moment, very easy to do on the kerb there. And he just leaves us space there, which is quite nice to see. He didn't cut back across the track. He stayed over to the left, give, um, given a lot of space and respecting obviously the racing rules. And we go up to P3 now in this race. So we're in a podium position considering what happened on lap two. Very happy at this stage of the race. And then we're gonna come up to the next driver, which you can see P1 has actually pitted at this point. And we were actually within the pits um, we're actually only 17 seconds, I think, behind him, 18 seconds, and pit lane loss is 20 seconds. So we are going to be promoted to P2 now with these much longer pit lanes. I do kind of like them in some regards because it enables you to do stuff what we've done in this race where we've managed to go for that really early pit stop and get some nice clean air and get ourselves much further up just by having no one in front of us and being able to race it with a bit better race pace, as you can see, into P2 and catching P1. Let's skip ahead to lap number nine i think this is out of ten and um, you can see we're very very close to p1 we're looking like we're going to be able to actually challenge for the win in this race now this is the driver i want your opinion on now i don't think he was particularly like really dirty to myself actually um but some of the moves were just a little bit disrespectful and i decided to go back and have a look at what else went on in the race and yeah so make sure you see the clips at the end of the race before you make a judgment because i think there's there's definitely some issues here, but um, you can see, trying to find a way past him here. We go around the outside here, we go to the right hand side, and then I dart off to the lefty. You can see I just go for a little fake down the lefty, covers that. He's not going to let me through. I can see that um, he's obviously going to be quite defensive, um, which is 
totally understandable. I would do the same thing in this position, but we've got very worn tires. We're trying to find the way past. We're going to try and go around the outside now into this tight left-hand corner, which, to be brutally honest, is a very hard move to make, and I didn't expect this to work, if I'm honest. And yeah, he really accelerated out of that and give us a little knock again. I don't see a problem with that. I think that's pretty much fair driving. He had the inside line, he squeezed us out to the um, outside, and yeah. No real harm, just a, a little bit of aggression there in the defensive driving, but I think that is perfectly acceptable. I actually think that's okay. And then we're working our way into this tricky section here. You can see he's really struggling for grip, which is surprising because he's on much fresher tyres than myself. Uh, my tyres are really struggling at this stage of the race, but you can see we're managing to stay behind. We're actually the 30, what, 51 still on lap 8 there, which wasn't bad at all considering. And now we're going to go into this final corner and try and get a nice run on him on this final lap of the race. This is our final opportunity to really go for a move um, you know, into turn one, get the slipstream, which we've managed to get there. We've got a nice solid exit. Now, is he going to fall for the fake? We're going to try the fake, um, but as you're going to see here now, we go for the fake here. We're watching on the replay camera. We go for the fake. I then dart back underneath him and we... I don't know if it's a bit of a lag connection. We do tap him, so I decided to back out of that. I went down to second gear, got off the throttle, let him get back in the lead because I didn't want to take the lead with a little touch there. Maybe that might have frustrated him a bit, but we didn't, you know, I backed out and we let him take that as we try and go around the outside of this corner. We, you know, we've got the softer tyres, but they are warm. They're struggling for grip. You can see he's defending pretty fairly so far. I don't think he's done anything really massively wrong at this stage. However, um, it starts getting a little bit more aggressive, I think, through this corner here i can't work out whether this was a deliberate um you know coming back across the track but through here you see i'd go really wide here and he takes a really tight line and he's got no exit speed you can see i've got much better exit speed there um, i think that is just a case of again um defensive drive and i don't think there's anything wrong i think he was just going over to the left hand side to try and cover the line really but you can see through here he breaks too late i get the undercut hit on the inside here managing out the power really early we make sure we give him plenty of space on that outside and then we're going into this really fast right hand corner we're on the outside very risky but i think it's fair that you can try and do this and we're on the outside and just he doesn't really give any space you can see he just pushes off wide there we managed to do quite a nice save though actually and hold on to position two on the final lap so yeah just about held on there um nothing too bad like i say um this just felt a little bit i think he could have gave me a bit more space on this corner but again i'm not too sure i'm not 100 percent convinced it's dirty driving i just think he could have gave us a bit more space there but when i went back and watched how he drove against some of the other drivers because i just wanted to see if it was um maybe his driving style or what and um, that's what i did obviously i went back and checked it all out so you see we managed to hold on to p2 so not the worst result considering we started from the back of the grid so let's have a little look first instant that came across was this one nothing really that bad there but then this one you can see he just he seemed to have a little bit of lack of respect and spatial awareness as he pushes the subaru out of the way clean out of the way there um subaru then comes back on the inside with the better traction on the four-wheel drive car and then again through here he squeezes him a little bit nothing too bad gives him a little nudge there a little bit aggressive um yeah i think it's i think some of it is spatial awareness in my from my perspective i don't think he's an outright dirty driver and then we come through this section again he just goes straight through onto the curb clips the mcgann again i personally probably would have gone for that move as well i think the mcgann was a bit out of control so i can understand what this one i think was a little bit naughty you see he just clean pushes p1 off the track um he actually gets a corner cut penalty because he went over the curb so there was a few issues when i asked him why he was a little bit aggressive the, the reply i got was he had to um so whether that's um, his philosophy on racing, I don't know. But let me know in your your opinion of what you saw there with the um, incidents that he did to myself, which I don't think was that bad, but the other drivers as well. That's the main thing. I think the other what he did to the other drivers was a lot worse than what he did to myself. Anyway, attempt number two at this racing from the back of the grid, starting from P16. We've had to record the first lap or so with the replay camera because the recording on the Elgato played up and went all weird. It actually desynced the audio at some point as well. I've had to resync it back up manually. So that should be okay um, once you get to the proper gameplay footage. So yeah, first lap is on the replay camera. You can see again, a few drivers dropping back to start at the back. Now this race was probably one of my luckiest races ever on the game. Um, I feel like I must have been, like someone was looking down on us on this race because at every opportunity there was just 
lock. So yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through this race. Um, start from P15, we see the Super in front of us. We're just trying to work our way through here. Now, you can see a lot of battling going on. I also noticed the Shroko in front, which is going to be bad on tyres, but insanely hard to overtake because of the acceleration of that car. Um, we managed to go for the move on the Subaru there, up the inside, get that move done. So there's one position out of the way, up into P14. And now we're going to go for an, possibly another move on this Megan in front of us. You see, we go over to the left. He doesn't really go defensive. So I'm going to take that position, make sure we give him the respect on the outside, give him enough space to make the corner. Yeah, another position gained. I don't think he was really trying to defend too hard there. I think he kind of knew that we were going through and then accepted that, used our slip shoot down the straight. And now we've got to work our way forward to that Scirocco. So, yeah, with this Scirocco in front of me, I was contemplating something at this stage of the race, which is not the easiest thing to do. I was contemplating just going straight in the pits here and putting the soft tyres on for nine laps, which is possible. You just have to do a lot of tyre saving and yeah you just got to put that brake bias all the way to the rear and just sacrifice some pace at the end of the race you can see through the corners we're so much faster than that Shroko and I can see I'm trying to go wide through it and I can just see straight away at this point in the race that Shroko is going to be difficult to pass for a few laps so I, and with the traffic up ahead of us I decided to make the brave call of darting off into the pit lanes at the into the pit lane at the end of lap one which again yeah it's going to mean a lot of tyre wear at the end but it's going to give us a lot of clean air because not many other drivers are going to do this. Last P20 actually did the same thing as me, um, jumped into the pits, I think he was in the Toyota 86 and went for the same strategy call as myself. Now this is the thing, what all I had to make do, I think the, the driver was actually pretty fast behind us, was just to make sure that we look after the tyres. So I wasn't really um, aiming for ultimate lap time as you saw that massive gap and that is what I'm talking about with this early pit stop. Just the amount of clean air you're giving yourself with these with these new longer pit lanes it really can work out in your favor if you've got the race pace to go in them pits very early although i do recommend for the ultimate pace in the race probably lap four on the mediums um so four laps on medium six laps on the softs is probably the fastest way to do this but what you do need to also factor into this strategy is the amount of traffic that you're going to get if you stay out and do them four laps or the six laps on the softs on the first stint and um, if obviously if you're starting at the back you're going to do the medium stint first and probably pit a little bit early just to give yourself that clean air on the soft tires if you start at the front you're probably going to go on the soft and try and do six to seven laps um, that is probably the best way to do this strategy but yeah as you can see this strategy can work as we skip ahead to lap four now where we've actually started to catch up some of the other drivers now some of these cars have not pitted yet as well and as you can see, the lock was just with me so much. Two cars right in front of me, just as we catch them up, perfectly out the way into the pit lane, and gives me self, myself just that little bit of clean air again to keep pushing and keep the lap time going. You can see we did a 50.7, which we were actually taking that lap super easy and breaking super early through here. You can see we're doing it now. Um, really cautious on the power, just trying to look after the tyres, keeping them tyres nice and balanced between the front and rear. And that's why I was quite surprised to do a 50.7 because I wasn't really pushing on them. That's, um, it took me by surprise when we did that. But yeah, reasonably good lap, keeping the tyres in good check for the rest of this race. And we've got six laps to do here now to the end on these tyres and we've already done three laps. So it's going to be interesting as we catch up that Subaru. Can we find our way past this Subaru in front of us in time to, without, without getting too held up here as we go through here. This is the corner that really suits him again. You can see that Subaru already struggling with massive on the seat. He's gone onto the grass. He's gonna have dirty tires. I don't think he's gonna go defensive. Obviously, no point defending when you've got dirty tires. You might as well just break a little bit early and try and tuck into the slipstream. This is what he exactly does there as we go through the corner nice and early into the apex, onto power early and work our way down into this fast flowing section. We're gonna fast forward the action again so we come up to the next group of cars which we have another Subaru in front of us and again this Subaru makes a little bit of a mistake through here or he just lets us through I don't know I think it could be understeer but it just could be a mistake or he could be letting me through I don't know but for some reason we're getting very lucky and another the two other cars in front of us at the exact same point straight into the pit lane and that gives me even more clean air so we're not really getting held up by the traffic even at this stage as we see we come out of the pits and the driver there has just come out on soft tires who was obviously at the front and we we're ahead of him so now the issue that we've got is we've got a driver on much better soft tires that's going to be chasing us down in this race as we skip ahead again to lap six as we see this brazilian with the very dodgy internet connection i didn't know what to do here is trying to stay away from giving a little bit of space again through here i didn't want to go for that gap you can see his connection it was all over the place it was um 
lagging around so I just followed the normal racing line I didn't want to risk anything and um, get taken out of this race because everything was going almost perfect at this stage of the race nothing was going wrong it was all going absolutely to plan as he goes in the pits again literally ideal timing into the pits gives myself another bit of clean air and we come out and we have a driver in front of us who I think has pitted onto the meat come out of the pits possibly on the medium tire so he's got fresh tires however the medium so now we've got to try and charge on and catch him up you can see lap times have been fairly consistent 51's there and um, a little bit slower on some of the laps where we've had to back out with the traffic but it's not been massive losses of time it's not like we've been losing two seconds as we skip to the end of lap seven as we're following the brazilian in p1 we've got the other driver behind us on them fresh stops gaining on me he's gaining a few tenths a lap but it's nothing massive as he makes a huge error there gets onto the curb loses control of the car and again i don't think we've ever had a race with this amount of lock in one race it's just been almost perfect as we go now into p1 and all we've got to do now is hold off the guy the drivers behind us and one of them is going to be particularly difficult the yellow mcgam um, driven by the American, I think it's actually the yeah the American driver. He's on the fresh soft, so we've got to be keeping an eye on that mirror. And luckily for myself, it doesn't look like he's going to get through into turn one as they've got the, as in Blue McGann still had the slipstream to myself on their medium tyre. So now we've just got to try and hold them off, keep consistent, don't make any big errors, and we might possibly get a win from P16 on the grid, which would be a perfect um, result here on the American service. This is what I was trying to do on the first race, didn't quite go to plan. Um, but we still managed to recover a race in that, fir in that first one. But this second race, um, we only did two races. I literally jumped on. We couldn't stream that uh, the other day. So I decided to jump on the American servers and do two races. So, yeah, if you do are enjoying these races and you want me to do more videos like this, which is what the plan is now that the children are back at school, let me know in the comment section. Remember to hit that like button as well. It's massively appreciated as we work our way up into this heavy braking zone. You can see this is where we're going to... Break the slipstream, I think it is. Here we get nice and early on the apex. He misses his braking. The other McGann goes for the move on the inside. So what I do here is give the slipstream to the medium tire runner because I know that that yellow McGann is faster. So we give him the slipstream to make him go side by side through this fast right-hand corner. And this works out absolutely perfect. You can see they're battling through there. I get that gap up to 1.3 seconds and that puts me out the slipstream. And we've only got two and a bit laps to go to hold on to P1 in this race. And you can see they're just battling with 1.5 seconds ahead. And all we've got to do now is keep it nice and calm to the finish to get a nice, solid victory in this race. So, as you can tell by my voice, you're going to probably know that we actually managed to get the win from here. There was um, no real issues. We, we managed, I think the guy behind us there managed to hold him off until lap 10 which are, I'm going to jump to now. We're going to jump to the midway through lap 10, I think it is. And you're going to see we've got the other, um, sorry, the end of lap 10. We've got the other driver behind us now in the yellow McGann. He was gaining very slowly on the, um, on the last lap. I think he was gaining like a tenth here and there. But it wasn't enough to take the victory. And I managed to do the nice drift over the line to celebrate the victory. And we do it in quite a, fin a reasonable finishing time there. If, um, 19 minutes 11 from the back of the grid, it's not too bad. We we can actually do it under the 19 minutes from the front of the grid. But that's, you know, to do it in only 11 seconds slower from the back of the grid is a pretty good um, time. Because, and that really does show you the advantage of pitting very early if you've got a lot of traffic it does tend to work out let me know again if what you think of the other driver i'm i'm on the fence i don't think he was a really dirty driver in that first race i just think he had a lack of spatial awareness and was just overly aggressive i don't think there was any maliciousness to his moves but you might think different let me know in the comment section remember to hit that thumbs up and i'll see you again very soon for more videos thanks again for watching everyone bye